Okay, so first example natin under a uh, rotating vessel, this is for open tank. So an open cylindrical tank is 3 feet in diameter and 5 feet high is 3 pips full of water. So 3 over 5 of uh, uh, 5 is obviously we have uh, 3 feet. So yung laman ng tank natin, we have 3 feet of uh, water. So, if the tank is rotated about its uh, vertical axis, kung ito man yung tank natin, and to be rotated about its uh, vertical axis, let's say the angular velocity omega, first requirement, what angular speed should it have so that the water would just uh, reach the rim of the tank? So, kung i-rotate natin yung tank na ito, ang mangyayari daw is, dapat yung tubig, will just reach the rim. So, aabot lang yung tubig dito sa opening ng tanke. Second requirement, what speed should it have so that there's no water at the bottom within one, one foot from the vertical axis. So, i-rotate siya, walang tubig one foot from the vertical axis. So, unahin natin yung first uh, requirement, what angular speed should it have so that the, wa the water would just reach the rim of the tank. Alright, so first requirement is I-rotate natin yung tangke Tapos yung tubig, aabot lang dito sa uh, The water will just reach the uh, opening of the tank if we, are to, if we are to reword the question That is the same as What is the maximum angular velocity without spilling? So, pareho lang yun Kapag sinabi na without uh, spilling water Kasi nga, uh, kasi nga yung tubig Aabot lang sa opening. So, walang matatapon. If we are to reword that question, the same meaning. Okay? So, if we are to rotate without spilling, so, ang mayayari, again, so, the water would, ju would just uh, reach the rim of the tank. The water will be lowered here uh, on, on the center or on the vertical axis of D. Or the center of the tank, yung gitna niya. The water will be lowered. So, more likely, uh, this will be the appearance of the water just reaching the opening or the ring of the tank. So required, we, we are looking for that angular velocity. Yeah. So take note, uh, for the cases of without spilling, again we are just relocating the liquid. So initially, if the container is not rotating, okay, again horizontal, yeah. So if it is already rotating, the volume of water here on the center will just move on the side. So nilipat lang sila dito sa gilid. Kung ano man yung nawalang tubig dito, pupunta lang sa gilid. Okay? So for, this, uh, for these cases, kapag without spilling, half of the height of paraboloid will go up. Ito yun. So, half of the height of the paraboloid, that is h over 2, will go up, yun yung pupunta sa gilid. Then, equal lang yun, yung bababa. That is, h over 2, bababa. As long as the case is without spilling. Okay? So, without spilling. So, h over 2 tataas, then, again, okay, h over 2, bababa. So, let's say this is h over 2, yung pupunta sa gilid. Then, h over 2 yung bababa dito sa, sa gitna. So, that will be the height of the paraboloid. So, initially, ano ba yung available space? What is the available space for the water, for the water to rise? So, we have the height of the container is 5 feet. Meron lang tayong naman na 3 feet. The available space is... Okay, obviously, the available space is 2, okay, two feet. So, ibig sabihin nito... Yung tubig, pwede lang siyang umangat ng 2 feet. And pwede lang siyang bumaba ng 2 feet para walang malatapon. Without spilling. So this is, H over 2 is the available allowance, that is, 2 feet. So the required height of the paraboloid for the first requirement should be 4, okay, 4 feet. Okay. So the required height should be uh, 4 feet. How to determine the angular velocity? So we have height is equal to angular velocity squared, the radius squared divided by twice the acceleration due to uh, gravity. So we have, this is a uh, 4 feet 
Omega, what is the radius of the bank? I think nasabi kanina. I think this 3 feet. So the diameter is uh, 3 feet. So we'll be having a radius of 1 point. A radius of 1.5 uh, feet. Check na ba Okay, so 3 feet in diameter, a radius of 1.5. So we have 4 angular velocity squared, 1.5 uh, feet squared divided by twice. Acceleration due to gravity, take note, this is in English units, the rest. Uh, 32.2 and this is 32.2 uh, feet per second squared. So what will be the angular velocity? Why is this equal 10.6999 or we can uh, say 10.7? So if we are to do if we are to do unit analysis, okay, this is ito ay 4 feet, feet squared, feet, uh, feet. So already, makakansal lang yung feet. Magiging unitless, makakansal lahat ng feet units. So unitless is this, uh, unitless siya, that is the same as the region divided by Alright, region. Alright, this is square root of second squared. That is, the square root of second squared is seconds. So this is the same as 10.7 region per second, or that is the RPS. If we wish to convert this to RPM, the angular velocity is equal to 10.7 region per second multiplied by Okay, conversion factors, this is 2 pi, 2 pi region is 1 revolution. 1 revolution is equal to 2 pi rad. Then seconds, we have, this is 60 seconds is 2. Okay, 1 minute. Okay, doing unit analysis, canceling region and second. Okay, the remaining units will be revolutions per minute or the RPM. So we have angular velocity. So that will be the same as 10.7 multiplied by 60 uh, divided by 2 pi. Is it good? Uh, the same as 102.177 revolutions per minute or the RPM. So this will be the angular velocity. Ito yung angular velocity na pwede yung po, uh, ilagay din R E apply dito sa tank na to. so that the water will just reach the rim of the tank or at the same time if you are to reward the question walang matatawan maximum angular velocity without speeding 10.7 RPS and 102.177 okay, okay. revolutions per minute or the RPM and that is for the first question okay, let us solve the second question I'm solving for the second requirement. What speed should it have <coughs> so that there's no water at uh, the bottom of the tank within one foot from the vertical axis? So, paikot yun, uh, surrounding the vertical axis, on the bottom of the tank, there's no water at a distance of one uh, foot. So, how to solve for that uh, angular, angular velocity? Okay, so for these cases, as you can see, uh, we have an incomplete paraboloid. As you can see, this uh, it can be the parabola will be cut by the bottom of the attack. Uh, so for the convenience of the analysis, para may magawa dito, all we have to do is uh, we need to extend this paraboloid to have an analysis. If you can still re uh, recall from our previous discussion, if we are to extend liquid from a container's cover, uh, basically, that extension is an imaginary portion of that liquid. So here, supposedly, if we are to extend this paraboloid okay, on the bottom of the tank, okay, this portion of the paraboloid outside or on the bottom of the tank will be imaginary. Again, this will be uh, imaginary. 
So this will be supposedly this is the appearance of the paraboloid. We'll be having uh, two paraboloids this time. One paraboloid is uh, a portion of the paraboloid is true, while the this portion will be imaginary. So this is let's say the bigger paraboloid will be having let's say this is h1. We need to determine h1. So we have the radius of the tongue. Or the radius of the larger parabola is the same as uh, R1 and this is uh, the height of the smaller parabola and they say this is uh, H number 2. So this distance or this given of 1 foot will be the radius of the smaller parabola. So the height of the tongue is uh, given as five, uh, 5 feet. Okay. So if you are to observe uh, we have radius number 1, that is the radius of the larger paraboloid, R1, that is the same as the radius of the top, that is equal to 1.5 uh, feet. Uh, we don't have H1, then we have radius number 2, radius number 2, that is the same as the given 1 foot distance from the vertical axis, that is 1 uh, foot. Yung distance mula doon sa vertical axis na walang tubig, yun yung parang radius ng imaginary paraboloid natin. And we don't have uh, H number 2. So how to compute for H1 and H2? So we may apply, uh, this is the SPP, if you can still recall this one from your analytic geometry. That is the squared property of a uh, parabola. So the squared property of a parabola, we have R1 squared is 2. Uh, H1 is equal to, this is R sub 2 squared is 2. H sub uh, 2. If we are to observe, what is the equivalent of H1? Okay, the equivalent of H sub 1 is equal to H1, that is the height of the tank, 5 feet plus and We have the height of the tank, we have 5 feet plus the height of the imaginary portion, height number 2 So we have, all we have to do is a substitute to determine height number 2 or height number 1 So we have R1 Range number 1 is 1.5 squared. This is divided by H number 1. But the equivalent of H number 1, I plot this equation, the equivalent of H number 1 is 5 plus height number 2 is now equal to, we have radius number 2 is given as 1 foot. So this is 1 squared. This is divided by height number uh, 2. So what we have then, this is a 1.5 uh, 1.5 uh, squared of height number 2 is equal to we have 5 plus height number uh, 2. So this is the same as 1.5 squared height number 2 less height number 2 is equal to 5. So what is 1.5 squared? I think that is uh, 2.25. This is 2.25 of height number 2 minus height number 2 is equal to 5. So this is the same as 1.25 of height number 2 is equal to 5. Dividing both sides by 1.25, we have height number 2 is equal to, and this is 5 divided by 1.25 is equal to, and this is the same as 4 feet. Height number 2 is equal to uh, 4 feet. So we have a height number 1 is equal to 5. Height number 1 is so equal to, we have 5 plus okay, 4. So height 1 is 9 feet. Okay, so for this condition, the total height of the paraboloid is 9 feet, supposedly. If we have now the height, we can determine the angular velocity. So from the equation, h is equal to omega squared, the radius squared is divided by twice the acceleration due to gravity. We have 9 equal to omega squared. The radius of the tank is 1.5 squared divided by twice of 9.81. So angular velocity, again, the resulting unit of that will be in terms of the radian per second. I'm oh, sorry. So again, we are in English units. So this one should be uh, 32.2 feet per second squared. 
Okay, so we're having an angular velocity of uh, 16.05 uh, radian per uh, second. So converting to RPM, this is multiplied by, this is uh, 2 pi radians is to 1 revolution multiplied by uh, 60 seconds is to 1 minute. Or simply, uh, next time if you have to convert uh, RPS to RPM, simply multiply 30 over 5. That is the same as the 60 over uh, 2 pi. So this multiplied by 30 over 5. And we have an angular velocity uh, equal to 153.265. This is now uh, the revolutions per minute or RPM. So this will be the angular velocity for this given problem.